Let's talk about virus. Virus is a small parasite that cannot reproduce by itself. Virus needs a living cell in order to reproduce. Viruses replicate only after infecting specific host cells. Since viruses cannot reproduce on its own, they are not considered living. Because one of the characteristics of life is able to reproduce. Nor do viruses have cells. They are smaller than the cells of living organisms. Viruses are just packages of nucleic acid and protein. Most of the viruses have DNA or RNA as their genetic material. Genetic material is needed in order for the virus to replicate and survive. Virion, it is a complete virus particle, which consists of nucleic acid surrounded by a protective coat of protein called capsid, as shown in the diagram below. In 1892, first virus was discovered by Dmitry Ivanovsky, a Russian microbiologist. This virus is called tobacco mosaic virus, which causes crop failures in every part of the world. Plants with tobacco mosaic virus have mottled with yellow, white, and light or dark green spots and streaks. Most commonly infected plants are tomatoes, squashes, cauliflower, and cucumbers. Now, let's talk about the structure of the virus. A protective protein of the virus is called shell or capsid. A nucleic acid genome made of DNA or RNA, tucked inside of the capsid. There are different types or forms of capsids. One type is called icosahedral capsids, which have 20 faces. Examples of this capsid are poliovirus, rhinovirus, and adenovirus. Filamentous capsids, named after their linear, thin, thread-like appearance. It is also called rod-shaped or helical. Head tail, a hybrid type of capsid which consists of an icosahedral head attached to a filamentous tail. One example is the bacteriophage. Some viruses also have a layer of membrane called the envelope. Enveloped viruses, they contain proteins that help viral particles bind to host cells. Examples are COVID-19, influenza, hepatitis B and C, and hemorrhagic fever or Ebola virus disease. How viruses invade an organism? Viruses need to access the inside of a host's body. Viral infection begins when proteins on the surface of a virion bind to specific receptor proteins on the surface of host cells. Viruses could also enter respiratory passages and open wounds can act as gateways for viruses. Certain viruses could hitch a ride in an insect's saliva and enter the host's body after the insect bites. Mosquitoes' saliva could infect by the virus. Examples include the viruses that cause yellow fever and dengue fever. HIV, a virus with an envelope, can be transmitted through sexual intercourse with the infected person. Once inside the body, it fuses with the membrane and is pushed through. Viruses release their genomes and also disrupt or hijack various parts of the cellular machinery. Another enveloped virus is the influenza virus, which engulfs by the cell.
Some non-enveloped viruses, such as the polio virus, create a porous channel of entry and burrow through the membrane. Now let's talk about the size of the virus. The measles virus has a diameter of 220 nanometers. Hepatitis virus has a diameter of 45 nanometers. Polio virus has a diameter of 30 nanometers. How viruses reproduce. There are two processes used by viruses to replicate, the lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle. Some viruses reproduce using both methods, while others only use the lytic cycle. The lytic cycle. The virus attaches to the host cell and injects its DNA. One common example is the bacteriophage. Using the host's cellular metabolism, the viral DNA begins to replicate and form proteins. Then, the fully formed viruses assemble. These viruses break or lyse the cell and spread to other cells to continue the cycle. The lysogenic cycle, the virus attaches to the host cell and injects its DNA. From there, the viral DNA gets incorporated into the host's DNA and the host's cells. Each time the host cells replicate, the virus DNA gets replicate as well. The DNA spread throughout the host cells or body without damaging the infected cells.